Hey guys, welcome to the Rabbit Hole Review. Today we're going to be reviewing six different instant cameras. The Instax Mini 90 Neo Classic, Instax Mini 70, the Instax Square 6, the Instax Wide 300, the Canon Ivy Click, and the Lamography Instant. If you're in a rush, here are my top three picks. If you want to know why I chose these top three, then stick around and watch the video. For the first test, I simulated a portrait shot. For the Neo Classic portrait mode, I didn't use a flash, which is a huge pro for this camera. You can actually disable the flash, which is great. Um, and the portrait turned out pretty well. Here you can see the Instax 70 performed just as well as the Neo Classic. However, this camera is very basic and you cannot disable the flash. The Instax Square 6, I actually bought some faulty film, so that's what that little blemish there is. But other than that, both these photos I took, one with flash and one without, obviously that indicates you can disable flash, which again is a huge pro. Both pictures turned out pretty well in the portrait mode and I was happy with both. For the Instax Y300, I did actually think the picture turned out a little bit dark. You do have the option to either lighten or darken the photo before you take it on the back of the camera. You can also disable flash on the back of the camera too, which again is a pro. Um, despite coming out a little bit dark, I did still think the photo was okay. Now for the Canon Ivy Click, this camera really reminds me of a first generation phone camera and here you can see it's kind of grainy. And in reality, it's not a bad photo, it just doesn't have that same retro feel as the rest of the cameras give you. It's also important to note that you cannot disable flash on this camera. I took two photos with the Lamography Instant, one with the portrait lens and one without. The first one here is without the lens, and you can see I have way too much of my patio showing. I did attach the portrait lens and afterwards I saw a huge difference. The picture was much more focused on what I was trying to take a picture of and there are a lot of modes on the camera to try to get you the best photo but in my opinion they're very inconsistent and most of the photos took a few tries to get decent. For the second test I mounted all the cameras up on a tripod and took a macro shot of my Spyro action figure. My very first picture with the Neo Classic, I did not have it on a tripod, so it did turn out off-centered. Once I got the tripod out, the pictures were more centered. The second picture, it's still a little blurry, and I was the recommended 30 to 40 centimeters away, but I still couldn't get a clear picture out of it. The Instax 70 macro mode didn't do a whole lot better as far as brightness, it's still a little dark, and my Spyro does seem like he's kind off in the shadows and there was a touch of blurriness so I wasn't too impressed with that. The Instax Square 6 definitely had one of the nicer photos of the macro test. However, my Spyro did seem kind of far away, especially for a macro mode. Mind you, all of my cameras were the same distance away, which is about 30 to 40 centimeters. So uh, I'd say the Instax Square 6 did the best on this macro test. For the Instax Y300, I did a test first without the macro attachment. The first picture came out really nice and bright, but blurry and off-centered. The second picture with the attachment was much more centered, but a little more dark. It could have been because my sun went away, and it was still a little bit blurry, but otherwise much better. For the macro mode, the Canon ID Click actually did pretty well. Despite being grainy, it, it's a nice, bright photo, and it's actually not blurry. This was definitely one of the better photos from the test. For the Lamography Instant, again, very unimpressed with the outcomes of these pictures. It was very hard to find the right modes to try to take the right photo, and honestly, both settings I tried failed. As you can see, one is too bright and one is way too dark couldn't seem to figure out what the right setting was for that camera. On to the third test. The first picture with the Neo Classic turned out all right. Uh, I didn't really I wasn't impressed with how bright the light painting was, so I decided to try to do it with flash. And I wasn't too fond of the fact that I could see the person painting in the background, but the light painting did come out much better after that. 
Instax 70 does not offer a bold mode, so this was just a picture with flash. I think it turned out pretty alright. You can see the person you're taking a photo of pretty clearly, actually. For the Instax Square 6, it didn't offer bold mode, but I did try it anyway just to see what I would get. That was taken with flash, and you can kind of make out a little bit of light painting. I did try it again, and, and this one definitely turned out much better than the first. The Instax Y300 also does not offer bold mode, so this was just a photo at night with flash. Much like the Neo Classic, the person you are taking a photo of shows up pretty nicely. Now for the Canon Ivy Click, this is also a picture at night with flash, however this camera did not do nearly as well as the rest of the cameras. You can barely even see the person I'm trying to take a picture of. It's very, very dark despite having the flash on. And I was really unimpressed with this photo. For the Lomography Instant, they do advertise the prolonged exposure or the bulb mode as a special feature of the camera. However, I was extremely unimpressed with the outcome. I did try it a few times, but again, this was the best photo that I could get out of the camera. And for a camera that offers this as a special feature, I was pretty disappointed. So this is kind of a bonus test. So the cameras that offered a multiple exposure mode, I went ahead and tried to play around with those settings. Here it is on the Neo Classic. This is my little dog Chewy. I tried this first photo with flash and the second photo without flash. The second one without flash, you can barely make out what that even is, but all in all it was really fun trying to play with this setting. However, my little dog Chewy was way too playful of a subject, so I ended up having to switch to something a little more stationary. Here on the Instax Square 6, I try to take a picture of a hand trying to go back and forth. It is hard to know what you're going to get with the multiple exposure, but it's still really fun to play around with. On the Lomography Instant, I did try putting a piece of paper on half the lens just to see what would happen if I blocked off half the picture, and I ended up just getting a blank square. But either way, this multiple exposure mode is really fun to play with. Pros for the Neo Classic. It does have two different buttons for you to take the picture with, depending how you want to orient your camera. The size of it is also very portable. Aesthetically, it's a really cute retro looking camera. And for the price point, I think this is a great camera. This was my number one pick. Cons for the Neo Classic. I know it's a mini sized camera, so it does use the mini film. Um, but personally, I just wish this came in a square. That's my personal preference. The Instax 70 is my number two pick. Just like the Neo Classic, it does have a selfie mirror in the front. Despite being simple, it does have a few modes to offer. And the Instax 70 does use the same mini film as the Neo Classic. This one is also nice and portable. And aesthetically, I love how it doesn't look bulgy or ugly like the Instax Mini 9 or the Instax Mini 11. And this camera comes in a ton of different colors. Another pro is for the price point, this camera is really good. And if you're not trying to get into all the modes, this is a really great basic camera to have. Cons for the Instax Mini 7, I did not like that I couldn't disable flash, and I think that's what hindered some of the quality of the photos. Pros for the Square 6. I did like the size of the photos. They're much closer to the original Polaroid sized photos, which is a nice classic look. Aesthetically, it's a very nice looking camera. I think it comes in three different colors and they all look pretty nice. And it does have a lot of different modes you can play with. Cons for the Square 6. I wasn't too impressed by the quality of the photos, especially compared to the Neo Classic. Most of the shots that I took were a little bit dark. It is a little bit cheaper than the Neo Classic, but if you're on a budget, I would recommend the Instax 70 over this one. The Instax Y300 is my number 3 pick, and I love how big the pictures are that it gives you. It does come with an attachable macro lens that has a selfie mirror on the front, but my biggest bone to pick with this camera is that the power button was way too easy to accidentally turn on, and a lot of times I would actually find it turned on in my bag by accident. The Canon Ivy Click does have some cool features to offer. It does have a rechargeable battery, and it also has an SD card slot. Another really cool thing this camera does is the film actually doubles as a sticker. It does come with a selfie mirror in the front as well, but 
was one of my least favorite cameras. I mean, this hardly qualifies as an instant camera. It prints out so slow. For me, the image quality didn't have that retro look and it just looked like a regular phone picture that I could easily print with a portable printer. And I think you'd be better off buying one of those instead of this. The Lamography Instant was very disappointing on its settings. It was so inconsistent and hard to figure out. And despite using the recommended settings on the camera, I found that I had a very hard time trying to get a good quality, consistent photo. It does come with three different lenses, a macro, a portrait, and a fisheye lens, and a selfie mirror on the front, but I would not put your money towards this camera if I were you. Well, that's everything, guys. If this was helpful, please click that like button, and thanks for watching.